Well, here we are. <laughs> I dug out this box. And I dug out this box because I'm going to be doing some work. Doing some monorail refurbishments. Some power pickup monorail refurbishments. And um, I thought uh, we'll talk about the box. First, pair of safety glasses. But anyway, this is my box. Mm, it has all my electrical stuff and or whatever. Um, that I use to modify, shh, don't tell anybody, modify Lego. Uh, and specifically these days, modify monorail parts, <laughs> which I don't have a problem doing. Uh, people hate me. Um, so we're just gonna go through this really, really quick. I have this double-faced tape. Uh, it's called uh, Double-Sided Waterproof Acrylic Gel Tape. It's actually quite cool, it's clear looks like that and it's about a millimeter thick yeah <clears throat> this is what i use to tape the base plates to the plywood in the layout the melamine because this has a little bit of give to it it's not just a piece of tape there's some thickness to it so if there's any um roughness and or protuberances in the plywood it doesn't matter this thing just goes right over it um i like it the problem is it's, it's pretty sticky uh, so you only have to use little tiny squares, which I did not know because I did the whole perimeter of the <laughs> one of my uh, 32 by 32 base plates and then trying to get it off afterwards because you can't take it off. That took a lot of work without wrecking the base plate. And the stuff just comes off. You just roll it up with your fingers. It, it's it's kind of neat. Um, um, I like that stuff. I use it around the house too. Uh, I have my handy dandy soldering iron. It's a cheap uh, soldering iron, but it does the job. And I don't need anything else. So um, I have one of those because I do some soldering. Uh, this is my little Dremel. My second Dremel. Uh, this is what I use to drill holes into Lego. <laughs> and this 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 bit, I don't know what size it is. One eighth. I can't know. This is the exact size of a life flight. And is actually the exact size of, if I can show you really, really quickly, if I can find one. Uh, do you see that little hole in the top there? This is the exact size of that little hole. So <laughs> that works perfectly well. Uh, I, I like this little Dremel. Uh, the issue is that it, it doesn't have a lot of torque to it. So it does get b binded down pretty easy, but I'm cutting Lego and so it doesn't, doesn't matter. This is a bag of bits that I got over the years. Um, I kept on putting stuff in here. This is a... <coughs> two by four brick obviously hollowed out this is the way it came to me with the little notch in it and the, there was a third party company that would offer um um uh, sensors for your rcx and so this was a kit that had what they call a reed sensor in it and basically you put it together yourself it came with this this brick that's hollowed out and a two by four plate on the bottom and you solder the wires to the reed switch and then the other end's a nine volt connector and um the reed, switch, the reed switch is pretty good because basically it's a little tiny vacuum tube uh, with two little pieces of metal in it. Uh, it doesn't have any air pressure. What happens is when a magnet's near it, it, op it opens. So all of a sudden there's no power going through. So it, um, I think it's opening is when the magnet goes through it's closed when the magnet's not all over top of it. Or it could be the opposite. It could be closed when the magnet's there and open when, I can't remember. <laughs> but it's one or the other. Uh, and, and so I used these things along my train layout years ago to sense where the train was because the magnets on the train are pretty powerful. And so you, you built this thing into the track below the train. Uh, and so you would know where the train was and then you would either have it stop at crossings or whatever. Um, the issue is that the reed switch is made out of glass. Uh, the, the, the vacuum tube is glass and the, the, the metal's inside and they broke very, very easy. So I actually broke a bunch. I do have one or two left. I don't use them anymore, so they're in some bin somewhere. <clears throat> um, multimeter, extremely important if you're doing electrical work, especially if you're trying to test as you go through. I, I showed you how I use this when I'm testing my 9-volt connectors when I rebuild them. This is perfect for that. Um, this is my, I think it's 3 8 <sighs> Copper tape. I got the rolls of it. I I started getting them from Amazon. That's why I have much more. But I used to get them from the hobby the hobby store in in, in town. Uh, and this is what I do on my rails, my monorail rails, and it works quite well. I'm actually very happy with this stuff. 
and I got lots of it. Um, this is something I built and I haven't used lately, but it's my Lego table saw. <laughs> you can see it was a very, very, very intricate build. <laughs> very, very intricate build. Um, and of course, I had to cut a little notch through the the six, uh, the eight by sixteen uh, tile. Uh, basically, you just cut through, uh, and you can cut uh, plates. And I've done that many, many times. Um, I was going to make it more adjustable, but I said right now I was doing everything I needed to do, so I, I'm not even going to bother modifying it. This was iteration one. I have lots of fantastic enhancements for iteration two from three years ago. I didn't bother because <laughs> this thing works perfectly as it is when I want to cut Lego bricks. Uh, and speaking of which, <clears throat> this is what this is one of the things I cut. So this is a two by two electric plate. There's either two by four or two by eight when you buy them. Uh, this was, uh, I cut it down to a two by two. I mentioned this in a couple of videos ago. This is one of my homemade sensors. It's a, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> it's not pretty, but it didn't have to be pretty. Basically it's a variable resistor uh, on that thing. You can see it on the inside here. It does spin. And it's a 270 degree uh, variable resistor. It's basically, it's an angle sensor. And it worked quite well when I needed an angle sensor. Uh, this worked a little easier for what I needed at the time than the rotation sensor that you got with Lego. But in the end, I didn't bother uh, keeping it. I don't know what the other pieces are. Oh, a faded white piece. <laughs> I don't know what that's in here. Uh, oh, here's a reed sensor right here. Um, this is a reed sensor. Um, and you can see there's a little tiny metal right inside. This one's broken. The end, is this one broken? No, this one's not broken. This one I could actually use. So this is probably what that green brick's for. Uh, and of course it's got the end on it. So, uh, what else do I have in here? I have a, a DZ, uh, all DCC chip or DCC chip that I had. I, I don't know if this thing is good or bad. I don't know why it's in this bag because I got a whole bunch of new ones that we bought years ago. Uh, I have a broken uh, track pickup that I meant to fix sometime and now I can fix them because thanks to um, <clears throat> thanks to my buddies online. This is uh, the actual Lego motor for the train and it's got the the um, the gear on both sides. This came out of one of the train. I think this came out of a train engine. I think this one came out of a train engine. Don't quote me on that. This might not be one. Um, if you took apart a train engine, I think this is the one that's inside. Uh, I took I took apart a few in my life. Uh, this guy is again from one of those third party companies back in the day that built sensors for the RC RCX. This is an IR heat sensor kind of thing. So if you show a person walking past a heat motion, this thing will pick it up. So you could actually use our URCX as a, an alarm <laughs> for people breaking into your house. <laughs> I actually had this thing working once. It was actually kind of neat. Um, and the rest of it, just parts and pieces in there. Um, I just keep them in there so that I don't lose them right there. So there's that. There is, I happen to just have, because I used to be in IT a lot, still am, uh, ribbon wire, <laughs> ribbon cable, because I use this to wire my layout, and it was just easier to use a ribbon cable than individual cables. Um, I, ke I, ke I kept this thing after I wired my layout, uh, just in case I need to rewire it with more ribbon. <laughs> so I have the ribbon cable right there. Uh, what else have I got in here? This is fun. I will bring... Um, so this is what's left of my first spool. Uh, and this one has the white on one and the black on, so this is a double wire. This is the exact, as close as you can be to original Lego nine volt wire, but this thing will not, you know, zombify, uh, will not, uh, die. Um, but it has the white on it and I didn't want to use this for mine because the original was pure black. And so I just, uh, this is what was left because it comes in a six strand wire and so I took off the, the four with the white black and black and I made all my wires and now this is left over just put it back in the spool because this is what this is so this is this is four uh and uh, of course there's 
here where it actually so this 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 is what i would be using for my nine volt wires this is what i would be using with the white on it for my nine volt wires for sensors uh because i think it'd be wait what am i looking there it is <laughs> the white um so i have enough here to last me a while um and I haven't done any lately. I, I keep on bringing this to shows just in case somebody wants me to make them a, a, a 9-volt wire on the fly because I bring my parts and pieces to a show. Um, but that's that. Um, this is... I bought this to help me uh, when I was soldering because, again, they always say, you know, to put the uh, the wires in the clips when you're soldering and blah, blah, blah. I rarely use this. I got, I got this cheap, I think, at the garage sale or something. Um uh, with the idea that you would be able to hold the wire there and, you know, solder it. You know, you see those professionals use these kind of things. I always just found it was just in the way. <laughs> but I have it because uh, I have used it. Um, electrical tape. Electrical tape. So, uh, wire stripper. Very important. Uh, cheap Gruberman. Sandy got this for me. It's uh, it's 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 cheap. It wasn't the full full value Gruberman. It's the knockoff super special, but it does exactly what I need to do. So I don't need a full Gruberman. Uh, I I like this thing. That's what I bring to shows. Um, this is what I used originally. This is the wire I got from uh the source or Radio Shack or whatever. That I tried to think that this was the thickness of the original Lego wire, and it is. This is this is more rubber than silicone rubber. And it doesn't have the flex that the original had. Uh, I, I made a few uh, sensor fixes and some 9-volt wire connectors with this. I didn't like it, so, but I kept the wire. I think I bought like a meter of it. Um, I bought these thinking that I could use them in the Life Lights uh, Junior Kit. But they don't really work in the Junior Kit. These are not the right ones. So there is it. I mentioned this the other day. I mentioned that my friend sent me springs. <laughs> and I took some out. There, this thing was full of springs when he sent it to me. Um, and thanks, Jeff, for doing that. <clears throat> um, because I did experiment a lot with the springs for the for the pads, for the monorail uh, pickups. Uh, but I didn't go from there. Um, just getting done. Uh, I collect Velcro strips off of devices from work that we're throwing out. And I just have a big roll of it because Velcro comes in so freaking handy when you're doing this kind of stuff. So, so uh, there's that. There's tape. I don't know why that's in here. I got this spool of, of magnetic strip uh, from the dollar store, thinking I was going to use it for something in the layout, and I just never bothered. I had an idea. I can't remember what it was, but I bought it for that idea, and I got it home, and I started, and I said, this isn't going to work at all. So now I have this spool of magnet strip. <laughs> so there it sits. <laughs> uh, masking tape, always necessary for a half tonight. Uh, a small, small, small player of needle nose, uh, whatever, bent needle nose. This is what I use for um, replacing the 9-volt wires on the 2x2 the two two electric uh, plate. And da -da 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 -da. solder, obviously, need lots. Um, more solder, need lots. Uh, tweezers come in handy sometimes. Da -da 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 -da. I got this. I can't remember where I got this. It's one of those little fancy screwdrivers that, you know, you go like that and you have a screwdriver. It It's okay. It's, I, I, I usually like um, real screwdrivers, but this thing just stays in here just, just in case. Uh, -ba 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 -ba. Uh, I got this, again, from the dollar store, I think. Uh, Gorilla Super Glue. And I was trying to glue the other Lego pieces for probably this kind of stuff. And I found that the ABS glue works better. It's messier, but the ABS glue works better. This thing I probably just throw out because it's been sitting here for a while. Uh, -ba 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 pair of scissors. Um, this is um, a power hookup for the old nine volt trains. And I cut it off. Uh, I'm trying to remember what. No, it was actually broken at the transformer side. And I cut it rest of off it was already busted so i kept that wire for i don't know what reason <laughs> uh there's a leg one here uh shocking a whole bunch of small screwdrivers small clamps 
a knife, a steak knife that I use to cut things with. <laughs> Uh, a lighter because I do get my butane torch down here when I, I have my hit my heat shrink tubing when I'm doing some stuff so this thing is fantastic for that uh, a little jackknife that I don't know where this one says oh <laughs> laid law I got this from my, my company <laughs> that I used to work for <laughs> um, so this is getting down to the, the nitty-gritty this is important Th this is the three eighths is it three eighths uh, point three two point three two by a quarter quarter inch uh, brass copper strips. Is it copper? I think it's brass strips. And if I get went out, this is what I used to make the pickups for the bottom of the monorail. All right, there it is. This is this right there, and I you see it's the same width. <laughs> so um. I cut a piece off and I shaped it and formed it and blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> now I'm planning on trying to work it so it can stay on top of or uh, on the actual other bogies. I have an idea. I was thinking about it today, so I might try something tonight. Uh, but I do have two pieces of copper strip. Now I got these at the, uh, I got most of this stuff at Sale, S-A-Y-A-L. It's a, it's a warehouse superstore for electronic goods. Uh, you can buy PDUs, you can buy batteries for your UPSs, you can buy a whole bunch of different things there. Um, the resistors, transistors, capacitors, blah, blah, blah. Uh, heat sinks. <laughs> Not that people need heat sinks. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's a block from where I work. So I stopped by and that's why I picked this up. Um, I picked up some other magnets, the little round uh Button magnets, which come in handy sometimes. Um, and then the rest of it's just, I don't even know why I have thread in here. I honestly don't know why I have thread in here. And usually I put a needle in there, but there's no needle, thankfully, because I would have poked myself by now. Uh, I have thread in here for no real reason. <laughs> and a pencil. And sandpaper, because sandpaper comes in handy. Uh, more sandpaper. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is another little screwdriver that I got from my last company, from Harvest Ventures. It's really cute. The uh, end screws off, um, and it has all these little these little tiny bits in there. Um, but again, hardly ever used. <laughs> but uh, it has some Phillips in there and some flatheads. Does not have any Robertson. And I'm going. We're Canadian companies, and we don't have any Robertson. Come on, give, give your head a shake. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> I love American stuff up here. But see, this is this is the screw. These are the screwdrivers I use in here. Uh, I got these three uh, there, and I got this one here uh, for for various things. And I used to have a flathead in here. I don't know where it is right now to get the um, the two by two electric plates apart uh, because all these are Phillips. Um, that's what I use. So uh, then we get into this bag here, which is where I'm going with this. I had to get down to the bottom here to talk about this bag here. We went shopping around a few years back. I'm just gonna push this stuff out of the way. So I'm gonna have, so I'll put it all back in later. This is, um, I, I did a lot of looking online in the area because I wanted to see what I was buying instead of like just getting on Amazon. This is what I was talking about with the springs. If you can see that, I don't know if you can see that. This, the spring is pretty beat up, but I was trying to get it to be softer. So it'll hold the pad down. Um, so either it was too soft, uh, in which case the pad wasn't pushed down far enough, or it was too hard and it was pushing the whole uh, bogey off the track. So that was a no-go. This is the other thing I did before with the with the copper strip, or the brass strip. So this fits right underneath, um, if I can find the bogey really quick. Uh, there's another buried over here somewhere. There it is. This This piece fits right there. So I cut it to fit right there. See, look at that. <laughs> you think it would work. <laughs> you, you would just look at that. You would think it would work properly, but it doesn't. And that's what bothers me so much. <laughs> and so I have the hole drilled right there. You can see the hole drilled right there. The wire goes through the hole and then you solder it to the end here. And then this thing just sits there. The issue was it's either these things were not touching the, the copper strip on the actual track or they were pushing the bogey off like this thing hung too low 
There was no way of getting it just to rest and float nicely. Because I'm, I'm a hack when it comes to this stuff. I, I can't do it nicely. So, um, so I went back to the braided wire. The problem with the braided wire for me, so this is off a slot car. I got a slot car pickup. So this is what it looks like normally. So this is the slot car pickup. And basically, I think you just plug this thing into the car. I think it clicks in. And then these things come underneath. And then you can have your slot car working. Uh, so I take this little piece of metal apart and I get the braided wire there. The problem is that braided wire looks a lot like, and I'm going to use this term, and a lot of people probably don't know this term, solder sucker. <laughs> yes, this was a term back in the day that I used to know. Um, braided wire looks a lot like the braided wire that I used to use to get the solder off a circuit board when I was fixing a circuit board. So you take your, you take your soldering iron and you heat up the solder that's around the resistors or the transistors or the, the IC. And then you put the, this little braided stuff in there and it takes the solder off and it goes into the braid. So that's what it does with solder. So when you're trying to solder this braided wire to a wire so it sticks out the bottom of your thing and it's supposed to be like very very you know malleable uh, bendable the solder gets in there and it becomes as stiff as a brick <laughs> stiff stiff as a, and therefore when you bend it you break it because it's not bendable anymore so it was very hard for me just to put a little piece of wire on top right on top here and solder the this to the wire without the solder going like two inches down <laughs> <laughs> to the braid and then, then it's useless then it's there's no good so so that was a huge problem for me and this is why that specifically with the braid braided wire is specifically why i just gave up on the braid and i just you use, use exposed wire i just pull the wire through take off the insulation and you have the wire itself as the pickup which works well the problem is that the wire is less robust than this thing this thing will last a bunch of years depending. Uh, whereas the wire itself, just because all those little strands of wire are individual, they just can't hang in there. And if the thing goes backwards for a second or whatever, the wires break off <laughs> because that's what happens with copper wire. So this is, and, and this is, sorry, um, I bought this too. I found this, uh, this is an actual slot car pickup, right? So what happens is that this thing plugs into the bottom of the car this is go, this is what goes in the track and this you can see this little ridge that goes in the actual slot and so uh they have a, connectors to go onto here so the the power will you know go from the from the braided wire here into the car to the motor which is what i wanted to do for the train and overall i you've seen them work the issue is that i have not been able to create a connector where i can just pull the old braid off and put the old new braid on i haven't i haven't gotten there yet and it bothers me it really does bother me because this should be fun and easy and it's not <laughs> except for the wire the wire is just cheap and easy the problem is it doesn't last long <laughs> so so i have all these little bits and pieces from all these little slot car parts that i bought uh at the hobby shows or hobby stores uh i would walk in there and say oh you guys sell slot cars do you sell parts and pieces oh yeah we sell parts and pieces for the slot car is that perfect? I need some braided wire. And so I got these little kits. And they sell me these, these little kits for like five bucks, ten bucks, whatever they are, just for me to experiment with. And I have tons of braided wire now that would work nicely if I could figure out how to connect it to the wires. <laughs> but I can't figure it out. It is, it is, it is, he tasks me. He tasks me and I shall have him. I shall chase you around the horse's head nebulae. God. Sorry. <laughs> Deep cut. He tasks me, Joachim. He tasks me. <laughs> I gotta say, it's been over a decade since I've seen the movie. It has to be. And again, I've talked about it before. It is, honestly, and this is a surprise to everybody, it's not my favorite Star Trek movie. It's not. It's a fantastic movie. It is a fantastic movie in and of itself. But for Star Trek, for the mythos and the je ne sais quoi, for the... Uh, for the for the meaning of Star Trek as uh, as what Star Trek presents itself as for all the shows and all the whatever, Star Trek Six. Star Trek Six is the best Star Star Trek movie. Star Trek Two is an adventure movie set in the Star Trek universe. <laughs> 
It's a, an adventure story that takes place in the Star Trek universe. It really has nothing to do with Star Trek except it's in the universe of Star Trek. It doesn't have Star Trek ideas, ideals, morals, whatever. It doesn't have, well, besides the long and prosper, I have and shall be always be your friend, which is fantastic. <laughs> but Star Trek VI, it was a direct, let go off in this huge tangent, it was a direct uh, relation to the purpose of the original series, one of the main tenets of the original series, which was to be a reflection of what we're going through now in politics and history and whatever like if you go back and watch the original series they took on racism they took on sexism they took on uh the war in vietnam directly in a show called the private little war which is fantastic and the private little war story was a direct ancestor of star trek six because it dealt with the Klingons and stuff like that. And the war that was going on between the Klingons and the Federation, which was a reflection of Russia and the USA. And Star Trek VI was months or years right after Chernobyl. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a direct correlation between Russia and the US and the, and the walls falling down and like all that stuff. It was a direct a direct comparison of what we were going through in politics and everything at the time. I, I For Star Trek, St Six was the best Star Trek movie. It's not the best movie, but it's the best Star Trek movie. Out of all of them. <laughs> so, uh, and, 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 and that's with its faults. Because trust me, the faults in Star Trek Six are massive. <laughs> what they did, what they did to the, uh, the supporting cast was unconscionable <laughs> they they made him stupid they uh, are you kidding they, they were on the fleet flagship for all that time for decades and Chekhov doesn't know his own personnel are you kidding me or her doesn't know how to speak Klingon are you kidding me <laughs> the shell went to the producers and said of course so her is going to be extremely fluent in Klingon she's on the capital ship they did it for a stupid joke and at that that one scene, that one scene out of all Star Trek, even though Six is my favorite Star Trek movie, that one scene bothers me so much every time I watch it. It bothers me so much. The Chekhov, whatever, you know, the Cinderella, the Russian Cinderella story, whatever. Don't care if the shoe fits. But that little bug, but or her not being able to be Klingon. It, are, if I could change one thing... <laughs> Go back in time. I'd slap hard Bennett around. Are you kidding me? No. Th there's no way you should do that. It would have been, and again, it would have been a much better scene. It would have been. This is, uh, this is me. Okay. Wasting time. It would have been a much better scene. Here's picture this. You get this. The Enterprise is sneaking across the border. Going to go rescue Kirk and McCoy on the planet. <laughs> Ro <Rovente. laughs> It's fantastic. That whole thing was fantastic. So they're going across the border and they have some kid at the con or at the communication center trying to talk Klingon to this guy and her walks onto the bridge and she goes, oh, I better take care of this. And she picks up the microphone and she's talking and they're very sultry, like, uh, oh, for crying out loud, the, 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 the names just escaped me right now, Ursula Bator <laughs> from Generations. She could have picked up the mic and just talked right into it and then you just cut to the Klingons are like oh they're all turned on because there's this really sexy voice and Klingonese talking to the oh this is gonna oh yeah we better uh, and it would have been a much better scene and then everybody's turning around looking at Uhura and she goes what you don't think I can speak Klingon <laughs> like uh, that would have been a much better punchline you know I've been sitting in this chair for 30 years you don't think I can speak Klingon a much better punchline it would have been a hundred percent better. And there's, there's no downside to that scene as I'm telling it. Like I can't, nobody's come up to me and say, Oh, you can't do that. It would have been perfect. Just changing that one scene in that movie. And then it would be an exceptional movie, but nope. They made fun of Uhura. They made fun of Chekhov. They didn't make fun of Sulu because he was off the ship because they did that in Star Trek five, which was disgusting. <laughs> they made Chekhov and Sulu being little horn dogs chasing the, you know, cute Klingons around. I'm going, they're officers on the flagship. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Anyway, my rant's over. Um, so this is my uh, bag of bits, and uh, I'm happy I got it. 
Uh, da -da -da -da. And this is where I keep all my stuff when I need it. I brought it up because I'm gonna be I'm gonna take keep this out because I'm gonna be doing some stuff with that. Um, and sooner or later I'm gonna, you know, even probably downsize this, but there isn't too much in here actually that needs to downsize. It's kind of nice. I'll say. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. I should actually keep one of these with me on the in the layout at the shows because if the copper breaks, copper strips break, then you know I'm pooched. Um, I keep on trying to get this thing to fit nicer, and every once in a while I get it to work very nicely. But overall, it's a bit of a pain. I stuff everything back in here so it all fits. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm gonna leave the soldering iron out because I'm gonna be using that. Safety glasses. Uh, that's about it. Uh, hink shrink to hink shrink to uh, hink <laughs> heat shrink tubing hink. <laughs> well, there's a thought, and it just hit me now. If I go get some bigger heat shrink tubing, because the store is just down the street from where I work, if I get bigger, thicker heat shrink, so the diameter is bigger inside, I could kind of twist the wire and the braid together at the end and just heat shrink it together. I just thought about that now. <laughs> this I might try tomorrow. <laughs> Not tonight because again, I have the heat shrink tubing. I have that very thin piece. Um, huh. <laughs> See? The, the mind works in very mysterious ways. Um, so I'm not going to do this because now I want to try that. I want to try that. I want to try the heat shrink tubing because again, you just cut off a little quarter inch of it and you put the wire on one side and the, and the thing and then twist it together and then heat shrink it. So it's not soldered, but it's in this heat shrink tubing. So it's going to be harder for it, for it to pull apart. I'm going to try that. Now it's like almost nine o'clock or it's past nine o'clock and I can't go to the store to get the stuff. Thankfully, I'm at the office tomorrow, so I'm going to stop by lunch and pick it up. Uh, I got this little stretch of wire uh, that I'm not going to worry about right now. So I'm not going to do anything down here except go on Jeff's show now. Um, because that just inspired me, so I don't need this. <laughs> so I was going to do something else. I was going to do something like that, but hopefully better. Um, that's it. That's all. I'm going to say goodnight, Gracie. Um, got my water. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it to Gorilla Glue now because I think it's getting crusty. Uh, it's like, whew, I hope you guys put up with all that. It is what it is. I, I do enjoy modifying Lego bricks to an extent. I try, and I keep on saying this, I do try to keep Lego as pure as possible. But in order for me to say, do the lighting, in the layout which people have seen and you know they like the videos in order for me to do that some bricks have to be modified and it's as simple as that uh i try not to go overboard I, there was a one point in there where i was oh it's just easier to drill holes through bricks and then trying to rebuild the thing so that you can run the wire through the bricks without modifying the bricks um i did that for a little bit and i said oh i'm just using my dremel way too much i'm wrecking far too many bricks <laughs> And I, so I said, I, I got to roll that back a bit. But to get the wires from here to here, I had to drill through all those. So there's like at least, well, at least a dozen on the, <laughs> right there to run the wires to there. Um, it is what it is. I, I don't mind doing it. Uh, other people, when they find out, are not happy with me. I'm, I'm sorry. This, this is my hobby. <laughs> you can have your own hobby over there. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with your bricks. Uh, but I'm not saying I go out of my way to wreck bricks. And um, and so <clears throat> I'm overall comfortable with how many bricks I modify in my life. Um, and in the end, the results for me speak for themselves. When you see this thing going around the layout and it's all lit up, I think that's awesome. I think it's really neat to see that. And so um, I will keep on working at it to reduce the number of wrecked bricks, quote unquote. But I'm still going to do that because I think it's a value added enhancement to the layout or whatever else I'm doing at the time. Um, 
yeah and, and a lot of people are purists and i'm not so i do um i do differentiate uh third party stuff um i don't want to go off in this tangent but i'll touch on it um i just showed you guys two or three things in that baggie of uh that uh, back in 2000, 2001, 2002, and around there, uh, a lot of uh, some fans. This is where Rob Hendricks got his start too, right? I mean, that's uh, he um, he has Lego bricks in his kit as well, and he also uh, has, goes out injection molding for the 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 covering of the advance and the basic kits and the junior kits. But the bases are always two by four plates or two by four technic plates uh lego technic plates so lego back then didn't seem to care they didn't seem to care they actually went out of their way to make a point that third party add-ons to their stuff was perfectly acceptable because the rcx after a year of it being out in the market you could go out and buy a lot of third party stuff for the rcx including firmware and and programming languages and Lego was really encouraging that, or at least not actively discouraging that. I just found out the other day that Lego is sending out cease and desist letters to a lot of third-party companies who su supply parts and pieces to the Lego community for whatever section of the hobby it is. I think I'm talking about the trains right now, uh, where they put uh, the third-party company puts ball bearings in through Technic bricks because then the wheels run smoother and then your trains run longer uh, and it's better. <laughs> and because Lego doesn't do that. They, they're not interested in the, the shows. They, they make their train sets for the kids to play with in their house that you know, after an hour, the kids put it away and they get out next week. Whereas when we're doing a show, we're doing it through for a day, a week, a month. Um, and you want the trains to run a long time. It's like your old HOs. Like I had, we had an HOs layout on our pool table for months and it was running every night we didn't have to worry about it because it would just run uh and the lego you can't do that <laughs> nicely it's like when they they got rid of the nine volt line fine i think they shouldn't have but they did uh but now they're going actively after third-party companies uh who supply parts and pieces for our hobby because they don't like the fact that some of their parts and pieces actually have lego bricks in them so, so they're reselling lego bricks modified lego bricks ish sometimes they're not just the bricks that have to be like the again the two by four plate that rob hendrix puts on with his lifelike kits um and so they don't like that idea i'm going go away like this is this is when the companies jumped the shark you guys the lego company was so impressed with the lego fan community back in the late 90s and the early 2000s that all the shows we were doing and all the conventions we were doing. And again, I'm not going to talk about the simple fact that they were in the red in the late 90s until the fandom saved them. <laughs> Bionicle was 100% fandom. It wasn't just kids. It was fandom that made that huge. People, not kids collect, well, some kids, but and, and, our, and, our, and our convention started and ramping up all over the world. And Lego was just, hey, we're going to come to your conventions. We're going to have a booth and we're going to do all this. And then all of a sudden they got bigger and richer and became the number one company in the world. And now their britches are too big and now they're too, they're too good for us. Really? <laughs> I have a problem with that. Again, I'm not going to stop buying Lego. <laughs> But, I mean, I've been here before. <laughs> Again, in the 90s when they couldn't produce a good set for the life of them. Um, I'm thirsty. And I'm going to go to the Jeff show. I have so many things to talk about, but I'm going to let it go. Uh, that's it. That's all. I will talk to you soon. Stay safe.